Regardless of the situation, the most valuable resource you possess after food, water, and shelter are the skills you can bring to bear to survive and help others to survive. Unlike food or water or shelter, you can't be robbed of your learned skills. All the tools in the world, all the neat survival gadgets, are rendered useless if you don't have the skills to properly use them. And though much can be said about pursuing recession or depression-proof occupations, jobs can evaporate in a truly horrific grid-down situation. When your job is rendered non-essential, will you have the skills you need to survive? In this video, we'll look at 10 skills to develop that will be sought after and actually paid during a depression. While we often look in the prepper community at gear as important, and it is, skills are just as important, if not more so, as they cannot be taken from you and are an asset that can provide returns. The value of these skills really became apparent during the Great Depression in the 1930s, but all of them date back thousands of years. While jobs and careers may disappear amongst the waves of an ever-increasing unemployment rate, just like our grandparents, great or great-great-grandparents, having a set of skills can keep you and your family alive. You may choose just one skill to learn, but you will be more successful with a range of these basic skills. Here are the top 10 skills that would be very valuable to have and would actually generate income in the event of a major economic downturn. Number one, hunting and fishing. Perhaps one of the oldest skills, hunting and fishing, puts meat on the table. Most people today are heavily reliant upon the meat and fishing industries to put protein on their plates. Industrial meat and fishing production have introduced a wide range of toxins to our table as well. From E. coli to high levels of mercury in our seafood, our overdependence on industrial sources of meat is a fragile source when health is also at stake. Also, the types of meats we put on our plate lack variety. There are hundreds of chicken breeds in existence, for example, yet industrial farming only produces a few. According to FishBase, a global species database, there are over 33,000 different types of fish, yet the average American can probably list the types of fish they have eaten on one hand or two hands at the most. It's great to have an emergency fishing line and hook in your tackle, but will you know how to use them when the time comes? Have you ever processed meat for your own table? Hunting and fishing are skills you need to know, not only so you can secure food for your table, but also you can trade for other things you may need. If money becomes relatively worthless because of an economic collapse and hyperinflation, venison steaks, frog legs, or even a 20 pound catfish hold tremendous value. Number two, foraging. The second skill to get you by is foraging. Just as our tables lack diversity when it comes to meat, they also lack diversity when it comes to the edible plants to consume. Foraging for food is an essential skill to cultivate now. That pun is intended. Did you know you can eat the entire sunflower plant, not just the seed? Did you know you can eat daisies and many other flowers? Do you know what mushrooms, berries, and nuts you can eat? If you grew up in the Midwest or South, maybe you harvested gooseberries for a grandmother's gooseberry pie. Knowing what parts of the plants are edible and in your area is critical to having food on your table when the normal supply chains we are overly dependent upon disappear and our own stores of food dwindle low. Number three, gardening and farming. Gardening and farming are the third skill types that will help you to survive through an extended depression. Remember, the Great Depression began in 1929 and lasted nearly a decade. Another depression may last just as long or longer. In another video, I'll be discussing apartment gardening, but if you're fortunate enough to have an area to garden, farm, or even raise chickens, goats, or some other animals that produce food beyond their own meat, knowing these skills will allow you to thrive amidst the suffering. These skills put food directly on your table, and when done right, provide you with sellable or exchangeable products that carry your family through an extended economic downturn. Number four, cooking and canning. Surviving a depression relies heavily upon your ability to not waste anything. Most of the meats used in modern barbecue were deemed inedible and given to poorer folks or slaves. The long, slow cooking and spicing of the tough meats created something delicious. Barbecue and smoking were used to preserve meat. After all, it would be difficult and foolish to attempt to eat a whole cow or a pig in one sitting. So, cooking and not wasting foods are a critical part of surviving. During the Dust Bowl, where droughts, rabbits, or grasshoppers wiped out almost all the vegetation, brine tumbleweed became food for consumption. Russian thistle, or tumbleweed, grew rampantly during this period, one of the few plants that could survive the harsh conditions. People became so desperate that they started to brine the tumbleweed, rendering it edible. 
Our over-dependence on the pre-processed, pre-cooked food supply sources will make it very hard for many in a post-collapse environment. Knowing how to cook, can, and preserve your food are critical skills to keep you and your family fed through an economic depression. Once your family's essential food needs are met, your surplus can be sold, bartered, or traded for other things you need. Four cups of dry beans that have been cooked can feed many, many hungry mouths. Number five, baking. Ask a cook if he bakes or a baker if she cooks. The fact that baking is a skill all in and of itself can't be lumped in with cooking. Baking is a science that requires some exact measurements and precise temperatures and time. It's not a skill you can just instantly pick up, which is why you need to practice it before you really need it. Having just one bread loaf recipe or one cookie recipe won't be enough to get you through a significant economic downturn. What will you do when flour isn't available, or butter, or milk? You should know how to make flour from other sources like acorns, chickpeas, or rice. Explore old recipes. Know how to make hardtack and not just a loaf of white bread. Try out other recipes now before you absolutely need to. Number six, sewing, knitting, crocheting, braiding, and knot tying. Sewing, knitting, crocheting, braiding, knot tying, and any manipulation of textiles or threads and ropes are valuable skills to know in a prolonged economic depression. Whether you're knitting a blanket or hats to keep your children warm, repairing a last pair of jeans to last another year, or harvesting an old sweater to make threads for a fishing net, the manipulation of fabrics and threads are a skill you can't live without. Most people only know how to tie a square knot, but that won't hold a heavy load or secure a fishing hook. Just as a single strand of rope isn't as strong as multiple strands wound together, the more you know of these sciences, the more likely you are to be able to produce what you need to survive and to have a skill in high demand in a post-collapse society. Number seven, home brewing and fermentation. I put brewing and fermentation together because the science of how they work is similar. Technically, I could have put it together along with baking since bread making often involves yeast consuming sugars. That's really all there is to fermenting and homebrewing. Either yeast or bacteria consume available sugars and produce either alcohol or lactic acid. Both of these byproducts are useful in their own ways. That obviously oversimplifies the process. There's much to learn with these skills and whether you're making beer, mead, dandelion wine, or pickled tumbleweed, these are skills you need to learn now. Making an error in the process can create more waste and usable products. The fact of it all is that people will always want alcohol to consume so having the skill of home brewing provides you with a basic skill you can barter, sell, or exchange with a prolonged economic downturn. It's important to point out here that learning to can foods also exposes you to the skill of fermentation. Many of these skills overlap with each other. If you harvest cucumbers from your garden, you can extend their usage by knowing how to ferment them in the pickles. Number eight, mechanics and engineering. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, the old adage says, but what you do when one machine you rely upon most breaks and you have nothing to replace it with. What do you do when you suddenly need something manufactured but you don't know how to? Mechanical and engineering skills are critical. Many of us may remember the amazing ingenuity exhibited by our grandfathers to fix, repair, or innovate a brand new item to fulfill a need to make life easier. Our industrious ancestors use a single steam or diesel engine to do everything from washing clothes to pumping water to threshing crops. Tools are useless unless you know how to use them, and using them well can provide you with a skill in high demand in a prolonged economic depression. Whether you're making what you need, repairing something for someone else, or repurposing what someone else thinks is useless garbage, understanding mechanics and engineering is a life skill that can get you through the toughest of times. Start now to understand this useful skill. Don't throw out that broken computer or fan. Take it apart and harvest the RAM chips or solid state drive and copper wiring. Understand how it works and if it can be fixed. Number nine, medical sciences. The medical science are another skill that can get you through another great depression. You don't have to be a doctor, but you can easily become a certified EMT or certified in CPR. Every skill you learn in the medical sciences will not only increase your chances of survival in a variety of situations, but they will also allow you to care for others. We've all seen the movies where the prisoner becomes the only person that can provide the right of medical attention to save the captor, chief's children, or spouse. The reason we have all seen that plot is because medicine is near archetypal. Caring for others and rescuing people from certain death is in our DNA. Whether you study herbal medicines or know how to stop bleeding and prevent infection, every skill you learn in the medical sciences can pay the greatest dividend of all.
life. You may never need to use these skills to stop someone from choking or to revive them when they stop breathing, but knowing these skills will assuredly not be a waste. Learn how to suture, set a broken bone, clean and dress a womb, and so on. Preparing for the worst now can mean surviving when the worst comes. Number 10, teaching, child care, natal and postnatal care. The final skill I choose to cover is about kinder care, teaching, child care, natal and postnatal care. Children aren't born with user manuals. Ask any parent what they had to learn at the moment when raising their child. Knowing how to give birth to a child, becoming a lactation expert, caring for small infants and children, even teaching requires some very specific skills. Fortunately, if you've ever had a child, you already know some of these skills. When the schools closed in 2020, many people began homeschooling or formed small community groups to share and exchange information. When both parents have to work to make ends meet, someone has to look after the children. Someone has to teach the children and productively engage their time. People aren't going to want to leave their children with someone they don't perceive to have these skills, so learning them can be very useful. That's a quick overview of the 10 skills that will be in the highest demand during an economic depression. Beyond that, there are skills you will need during an economic crisis that may last for months, years, or even a decade. The nice thing about skills is that once you develop them, you can rapidly deploy them when the situation arises where you need them the most. Whether hunting and fishing, foraging, cooking and canning, baking, sewing and knitting, homebrewing and fermentation, mechanics and engineering, or the care and education of children is your thing, you need to cultivate as many skills as you can now. It's the most essential part of prepping, though it often gets overlooked as people prepare for food, water, and shelter security. But while these three basics of survival can be taken away for you or may run in short supply from time to time, skills can leverage your survival chances through an extended crisis. Skills not only increase your ability to survive through a disaster, but they also become a commodity to help you get what you need to continue to survive. It's hard to limit all these great skills out there to just a list of the ones you think are the top 10, so I'd love to hear what you think might be a useful skill during a prolonged economic depression. If you have any comments or anything you'd like to share, please feel free to post those in the comments section below. I try to read as many of the comments and respond to them when I'm able to, usually within the first hour of releasing the video. If you found this video informative and helpful, please feel free to like it, share it with your friends, family, and community. Remember, there are links in the comments section below where you can find more information about things I discuss in this video. If you'd like to be notified when other videos become available, you might want to subscribe to this channel. As always, stay safe out there.